Good morning, Guardians. The Hijab Gamer here, and it is Friday in Destiny 1, which means Zer is arriving at the tower, or sometimes the reef. Though oddly, he hasn't been in the reef in a while. I mean, seriously, he used to sometimes appear in the reef. I have not seen him in the reef in a very long time, which is just, anyway. This is original Destiny. As you can see, it is the cooler tower, the original tower. So you know it's Destiny 1. As always, a reminder, don't forget, Zer leaves the tower much earlier in the original Destiny. Basically, he's only in the tower 48 hours since it's about 6 a.m. in New Jersey and he arrives at 5. That means you have less than 47 hours. What I recommend people do is like set a, a stopwatch or something. Or, I mean, it's easy to look up time zones as i said i am in new jersey he is gone from the tower by 5 a.m sunday morning you have two days depending on where you're at i for example i don't even think of sunday as Zer being available because he's gone so early in the morning so yes original destiny you have a lot less time he's gone sunday not tuesday like destiny too excuse me anyway as you can see this is how you know he's in the tower his mark is right over there. It's a good day. It's an okay day. It's not like, I mean, let me just put it this way. There is no trespasser. The, the moment there's no trespasser, you know, it's okay because trespasser keeps coming up. Anyway, you are heading straight towards the Vanguard with Cade because we all miss Cade. I mean, a friend of mine pointed out that there are some people who will start playing Destiny 2 who will never have met Cade 6. Who they'll talk about Cade 6 and they have no idea who Cade 6 is. Which is why I say play Original Destiny. Cade's in it. Cade's in it a lot. As you can see, Zer is over here. See, there's the Vanguard. There's Cade. There's Zavala. There's Ikora. And there's Zer. And what have we got? Because I, all I did was look at these two. So I always start the morning with these two because I pick those up because you can't get the details from Zer. So you, you just, I'm pressing Y to see details. You can't. Yeah, that's why I picked them up so I can show you the details with my own because I already own all of this stuff. So anyway, you have the usual legacy engram. I will do the research and get, do a video about which ones will give you a second year like so this will give you a year one exotic some of them will actually unlock the blueprint for the um second year version it's only a few of them that's why i've never really picked it up because it's a lot of strange coins um i'd rather pick up heavy ammo synths but yeah anyway then you have the ruined wings for the titan heavy ammo drops more often and contains more ammo in each drop that i like Though, I'll say, if Juggler's in effect, you don't need that. Juggler, I have, as I've said, Juggler will give you more heavy. Eh, it's okay. I mean, it doesn't seem like something you would use in Crucible. But depending on what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, let me know, Titans. Do you like this thing? How do you feel about this thing? It's interesting, though, if you really think about it. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you really think about it. So you are wearing um, gauntlets. That will make it so that when you kill enemies, they will drop more heavy ammo. So basically, the more enemies you kill, the more rocket launcher ammo they will drop. So it's like, yeah, I'm wearing these because when I kill Fallen, they drop rocket launcher ammo. Just when you really think about it logically, it's hilarious. Even magically, where it's like, it makes ammo appear when I kill enemies. But it seems pretty cool. For the hunter, you have the Radiant Dance Machines. You move more quickly while aiming your weapon. I have these. Honestly, I don't use them. Let me know, uh, other fellow hunters. I mean, as you can see, mine is not even unlocked. It looks cool. Don't get me wrong. It definitely looks ridiculously cool. But if I'm going to go with something that will allow me to move more quickly, I would rather use the Frosties because it gives you... While sprinting, you gain a tighter turn radius and faster grenade and melee regeneration. So you have more benefits out of the, excuse me, out of the Frosties than the Radiant Dance Machines. The only time I can think of the radio, Radiant Dance Machines being of any benefit is in the Crucible, where you might be aiming more often down sights, so you might be using this in the Crucible. Let me know, fellow hunters. I, as, I, as you can see, I haven't even used it. That's how you know, because it's completely locked see this is like he said original destiny and original destiny 
you, ha yeah, you didn't immediately get the mods open to you. Original Destiny was a challenge. I like Original Destiny. All right. Then you have for the Warlock, the Apotheosis Veil. Which I believe Apotheosis means to rise to godhood. Immediate health, melee, and grenade, grenade regeneration on activating your super. Okay, I like that. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, especially when you have, like, say, daybreak in effect. Or, no, I, it seems pretty cool. I, I, I like that. Especially, or, or when you use bad juju and then you get your super up off more often. That's actually pretty cool. I need to make sure I have this for my warlock. Because while I have everything hunter related, I don't think I have everything for the Warlock and the Titan. Then we have the Hereafter, which is a sniper rifle. Um, I'm trying to remember this one because I do have it, but I haven't used it. It looks pretty cool. Um, this isn't the one that's the PS4 exclusive that came to Xbox. I think that's the Zen Meteor. I can't remember. Because honestly, like I said, once I got it, it's like I don't really care. And I have basically everything, so. And if everything that you could get from Xur. There's a bunch of raid. Ex the only exotics I am missing in Original Destiny, weapon-wise, which to me is what really matters, the, the weapons, obviously, um, are the raid ones. So everything else I already have. Like, even the stuff you could get from Challenge of the Elders, I have. Anyway, so this is... Crouching increases so scope, zoom, and makes it easier to aim under fire. Um, yeah, Perfectionist... Precision kills with this weapon cause a bright flash. Oh yeah, this has come up before. Precision kills with this weapon could cause a bright flash that can blind nearby enemies. This is actually pretty... I mean, yeah. It depends on where you're sniping. But yeah, you know what? This might be pretty cool. I should probably... I can see it being used at like you're shooting from a distance. And you have enemies and you're sniping a whole bunch of them. And you get like... First of all, a uh, magazine is refunded if all shots are fired or precision kills. So you're shooting from a distance... You get four snipe, four precision kills. Each one of them, you know, will blind enemies nearby, so it makes it easier to precision kill them. And yeah, I, you know what? This seems, you know, I can't believe I didn't use this more often. Um, seems okay. Anyway, like I've said, I've always recommended you just pick up everything because even if you don't have the space and you dismantle it, picking up a weapon from Zer, getting an exotic automatically unlocks the blueprint, and it gives you um. Uh, grimoire score. So, highly recommend you pick it up. Just pick everything up. Pick everything up. If you have the, the, the strange coins, just pick them all up. And then pick up a ton of heavy ammo synths, because one can never have enough heavy ammo synths. I want to sit upon a throne made out of heavy ammo synths. It's not a problem. They're useful, okay? Then we got Hawk Moon and Moon Glow, which I do have. And a lot of people have said they like Hawk Moon more than Ace of Spades. I get it. Some pe First off, this is Moon Glow. This is the ornament you're getting. This is a nice ornament. I like this ornament. As you can see, I have used Hawk Moon. My Hawk Moon is fully unlocked. And I think it's primarily used in the Crucible. Okay. I am not a fan of Hawk Moon. I prefer Ace of Spades. Because Ace of Spades... As I've said multiple times before, every precision kill, um, basically, if you get precision kills, you don't need to reload. All right? Precision kills move one round from your ammo reserves to the magazine. That is why I like the Ace of Spades, because I'm pretty good with getting precision kills. So I can go for a while using my Ace of Spades without having to reload, which Hand cannons, the one thing that just annoys me about them is they feel like they take forever to reload. To me, Hawk Moon, all right, you get Luck in the Chamber, which is one random bullet in the magazine causes considerable bonus damage. So one random bullet, you are lucky. So you have a magazine of 13. One of those 13 is going to happen to do considerable bonus damage. If you're lucky, all right? You, you, that's why it's called, you know, Luck in the Chamber. Then you have Holding Aces. Two more random bullets in your magazine deal considerable bonus damage. So three bullets out of 13. Now for the easy, excuse me, for the sake of making the math easier, let's drop it down to 12 bullets in the magazine. So that means only one fourth, three out of the 12 bullets, right? 
will do considerable more damage. So you have a 25% chance of getting one of those random bullets, less than a 25% chance, because again, it's actually 13, of getting one of those random bullets that does considerable more damage. Now, add the fact that we, at least me personally, when I do need to reload, I mean, Ace of Spades, I rarely reload because I don't need to, because I'm constantly getting ammo moved to the magazine because I'm constantly getting precision kills. But with a hawk boot, I would probably be reloading often. So you have a 25% chance of getting one of these two random, one of these three random bullets. That's why I'm not really a big fan of it. To me, it's just random. I prefer certainty with my weapons over randomness. So I would rather know that if I get that precision kill, that bullet is moving from my ammo reserves to the magazine over, I have a 25% chance of getting a more powerful bullet. Again, I know a lot of people like Hawk, Hawk Moon. A lot of people like Hawk Moon. I'm not really a fan, but that's the. Um, but I also recommend you always pick up all of the uh, exotics anyway. Um, Moon Glow, good source. Good ornament. I think this is actually a really nice ornament. Um, so yeah. The other weapon we have is Telesto, which is awesome. I am liking Telesto. I've used it a few times. It is a void um, as you can see i have started to use it wait what is the um you're getting queen's command not a big fan of queen's command the ornament queen's command i have lingering vestige which i think is very very cool um this is queen's command and to me look i i like purple but this isn't as cool i mean it's just plain purple to me um i like this because this looks just cool but you're getting the Queen's Command, and honestly, if it just, just you could dismantle it and get five silver dust. So, Telesto, unplanned reprieve. Fusion projectiles attach and detonate with a delayed void blast, which is awesome. I was using it, and it's like you just shoot at an enemy, and then just pause, wait a moment, and then there's like, boom! There's this awesome explosion. It is just such a cool weapon. Um... Then you have Harbinger's Spark. Multi-kills with this weapon spawn orbs for your allies. That, if you're playing by yourself, is no help. But just the explosions this thing does is awesome. So I actually really like Telesto. I think it's really, really cool. I have used it a few times. Um, I tend to favor primary exotic simply because you get more ammo for the primary exotic. But this is pretty cool. Um, vestiges... Of the queen's harbingers yet linger among Saturn's moons. I don't know. All I know is the gun's cool. It's actually really cool. Now, again, the way you get silver dust is through the uh, packages. I break my brain is freezing on what they are called by doing um, things like the daily story, the weekly story missions, and the like, or dismantling ornaments. It uh, starts to build up. You go to the. All right, let's just go there because. So I randomly remind people of something every week at the end. So, Silver Dust. Um, Jaxi Poo. <laughs> cool. So, the you can still buy them, but you really don't need to. Um, these. Treasure of Ages. So you get these. Um, you can get like three of them a week by doing stuff in-game. And then you go over here. And here's the Silver Dust store. So this is where you can get ornaments, the House of Judgment reputation boosters, which I tend to keep forgetting every time I do Challenge of the Elders. Sparrows, I already have all of these. Shaders, you know. Um, horns, because this was when you could honk your horn, your sparrow horn in Destiny. Can't do, I, you know, I did not think you couldn't do that in Destiny 2. So I went to try and do it in Destiny, I'm like, wait a minute. Because I just never tried. That I assumed you could just honk your horn. But apparently not. And so, yeah, there was a whole bunch of different horns you could pick up. Um, emblems, masks, you name it. It's here. Um, not at least, yeah, anyway. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And um, I'll see you in the tower.